All this work that we're doing, brothers, for this ministry, eventually is going to pay off. You better believe it, man. It's going to pay off like you'll never believe. Okay? And by the way, we're the highest value male on this planet. The men of the Lord. The men of this truth. The hopeful elect of Yahweh Barshim Shai. The highest value male there is. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Kalkadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS who rule well, teach well, being great examples to his younger brothers, and peace and blessings, salutations to the hopeful lake out there pushing his word and truth and in sincerity across the four winds in the name of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, pushing to get up out of here. Shalom warm to the hopeful lake, the believers, the listeners. Whom have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in Yahweh Bashim Al Shah. And what I want to get into, all right, today, you know, is as you see on the screen, all right, you got, you know, the demon. Okay, and, um, you know, I'm just going to put the picture up for a minute, you know, pretty much. I know everyone has pretty much heard what she said, you know, what she's been saying. You know, she pretty much got a channel, you know, dedicated to scoffing. You know, and thumbing her nose up against, you know, the Most High, against Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. You know, and this represents the mindset of a lot of our people. You know, she's just bold enough, you know, to verbalize it. All right. And at the end of the day, you know, our people do anything to be seen, especially Eve. You know, that's why I'm just showing the picture. All right. I don't even want to hear her voice. All right. Eve is annoying. Okay. With that masculine ass voice. Okay, and you know, she, she, she backs away from the camera to show off her body, you know, which, you know, she got a little pouch going. Okay, and, and, and at the end of the day, no matter how fine you is, all right, let's play it out. And as liberal as she is, you know, all right, that, you know, Jake and the world is having a field day. Okay, and you know, you're talking about how fine she is with that box. It's probably hanging on by a thread, you know, nothing there. Okay, and, and a lot of these, you know, these women put these outfits on and take pictures, you know, just to put this out there, not to be, you know, petty, but, uh, you know, a lot of these women don't be nowhere near as fine as they pictures be, okay, when you see them in person, you know, especially when you see them in the bedchamber, they don't be, near, you know, you be like, damn, <laughs> you know, it don't look nowhere near, you know, the glamorous as they make it seem, but the, the hell with that, all right. You know, she's nothing but a woman. All right, all women got ass and titties, man. Okay, there's nothing special, great. Okay, but um, yeah, man, I'm gonna let the scripture speak for the most part. You know, I just want to do a little intro. Then I got a little video because she made the point. You know, said let me go to hell. You know, we're just gonna expound on it. Okay, but uh, I'm gonna let the scriptures talk, man. I'm gonna just go through some scriptures. You know, I'm gonna go into. You know, hell and what it, you know, the understanding of it. And I got a little video to play. And, uh, you know, that'll be it. You know, Lord will. All right. So this is Proverbs 16 and 18. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. This is Isaiah chapter 2. Verse 11. The lofty looks of man will be humble, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. I'm going to read in the NLT. Human pride, just Isaiah 2 and 11 in the NLT. Human pride will be brought down, and human arrogance will be humble. Only the Lord will be exalted on the day of judgment. Next chapter, Isaiah 3 and <clears throat> Isaiah 13. So lucky. Isaiah 13 and 11. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Isaiah 13 11 the NLT. I, the Lord, will punish the world for his evil and the wicked for their sin. I will crush the arrogance of the proud 
and humble the pride of the mighty. This is Second Ezra's eight and fifty. The book of Second Ezra's eight and fifty. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. So we know what pride <laughs> leads to. You know, we, we, we fully understand, all right, this path of pride and arrogance and boasting, you know, why you're able to move around. You know, she says she's finna go out. And you know a woman like that in this society, you know, she got plenty of simp niggas that she can talk to crazy. They sponsor her, you know, uh, her, her madness. Okay, you know, they jump to her call. All right, you know, she got a little body on her, so you know, you know, niggas are breaking their neck, you know, to, you know, cater to her. In this society, you know, this queen of heaven spirit that runs this earth, you know, so she's puffed up with pride. She's probably getting praised on the internet all day. She's, you know, doing, you know, these little shorts, you know, with the titties all in the screen. So, you know, niggas on there agreeing with everything. Okay, she's getting all this praise, the women backing her up. The Lord wants her to be proud and, and many more like her. Hey, she's, a, she's doing exactly what she needs to be doing. You know, if she rep repent, that, that's great. But the way she going, she's going to get their request. All right, on going to hell. Now, we know hell is not a place where you burn forever. All right, so let's get there real quick. The book of Mark. Um... Let's see. So you get the book of Mark. All right. Because hell, like I say, hell is not a place where you burn for heaven. All right. Hell represents two things. Either the grave, okay, which is death. All right. Or it represents a condition in the earth. You know, a condition of torment, oppression. You know, suppression. Okay. Being in captivity is hell. You know, being bogged mm -hmm. down with bills is hell. You know, different levels of hell. Okay, but the hell that the Lord is going to bring to the earth is going to be on a whole nother level. The way he's going to judge the earth, he's going to bring hell to the earth, man. You know, through fire. Okay, but it's not a place, another realm where you burn forever. Okay, and Satan is sitting in a chair. All right, with a goatee. Okay, with a toothpick. All right, laughing at your ass, man. Okay, this is uh, Matthew 5 and 29. It says, mm -hmm. and if thy right eye, all right, and if thy, let me put this, uh, don't disturb. All right, it says, and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members shall perish, not thy whole body should be cast into hell. Okay, and it's, when it's speaking about, you know, Plucking out your eye. He's not talking about your physical eye. You know, it's talking about something that can be a hindrance to you and the truth, you know, that we have to cut off. You know, we have to mend some things, we have to minimize some things we have to completely cut off, man, because it's a hindrance, man. It might not even be a sin, but it's hindering us in the faith. You know, and certain things we have to cut off. Alright, so we don't get caught up in this destruction, which is gonna be likened to a hell. So when you go into Hell, all right. When you go into the word hell, okay, which all that you know, the underworld and Hades is Greek mythology, man. All right, it says hell is the place of future punishment called Gehenna or Gehenna of fire. This was originally in the Valley of Hinnom, which was an actual place south of Jerusalem, which were the filth and dead animals of the city were cast out and burned a fit symbol of the wicked and their future destruction because the lord looks at all right especially in america man the, the places that's going to be the lake of fire because of the nukes all right that's going to be shot over here man okay and disintegrate this place the lord looks at these people as filthy animals man these people operate like filthy animals man okay and, 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 and hell just represents the future destruction of the wicked. 
Okay? So let's go here. I want to play this video. Now this is a simulation of war and it kind of go a nuclear war and it kind of goes into the you know what happens during the nuclear war you know just a simulation not saying it's going to be exactly like this okay but he says some informative things you know so we played the other day you know i want to play it again because this is what she's signing up for you know the way she's going this is what she's volunteering for man okay happen if there was a full-scale nuclear war between russia and the united states based on non-classified data the aftermath might go something like this when one side launches nuclear missiles the other side detects them and fires back before impact u.s submarine launched ballistic missiles from west of norway start striking russia after about 10 minutes and Russian ones from north of Canada start hitting the U.S. a few minutes later. The very first strikes are high-altitude EMP attacks, frying electronics and power grids by creating an electromagnetic pulse of tens of thousands of volts per meter. The next strikes target command and control, as well as nuclear launch facilities. Land-based intercontinental ballistic missiles take about half an hour to arrive. Major cities are targeted, both because they contain military facilities and to stymie the enemy's post-war recovery. Some cruise missiles take hours to reach their target. Each impact creates a fireball about as hot as the core of the sun, followed by a radioactive mushroom cloud. These intense explosions vaporize people nearby and cause fires and blindness further away. The fireball expansion then causes a blast wave that damages buildings, crushing nearby ones. The United Kingdom and France have nuclear capabilities and are obliged by NATO's Article 5 to defend the U.S. So, Russia hits them too. Firestorms engulf many cities, where storm-level winds fan the flames, igniting anything that can burn, melting glass and some metals, and turning asphalt into flammable hot liquid. But the explosions, the electromagnetic pulse, and the radioactivity aren't the worst part. Nuclear winter is, caused by the black carbon smoke from the nuclear firestorms. The Hiroshima atomic bomb caused such a firestorm, but today's hydrogen bombs are much more powerful. A large city like Moscow, with almost 50 times more people, can create much more smoke. And a firestorm sends plumes of black smoke up into the stratosphere, far above any rain clouds that would otherwise wash out the smoke. This black smoke gets heated by sunlight, lofting it like a hot air balloon for up to a decade. High altitude jet streams are... So they're just an example, you know, of what's coming. There's going to be way worse, you know, and, and, and people like her, all right, are going to be ground zero. And they're going to feel the full brunt of the Lord's anger. Okay? They're going to they feel the full force of how angry the Lord is with this society. And it's not going to be quick. The Lord is going to make sure they feel it. And it's going to be the worst pain to ever exist, man. <laughs> you know, the Lord going to make a statement. So, I'm, we're going to end it here. Like I said, we ain't going to make it long. You know, you got to spend a lot of time on E. You know, like I say, she... You know, I doubt she stopped, you know, especially not now. You know, when shit get hectic, it's going to, uh, <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. So let's get this in Malachi. All right, we in, this is book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 1. For behold, the day coming that shall burn as a oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that coming shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts. That it shall leave them neither root nor branch. It shall neither leave them root nor branch. Okay, so this day is coming like an oven. The Lord is going to turn America into an oven. Okay, and a lot of people are going to be trapped in that oven, man. They're going to feel the full wrath. All right, and it's going to be a hell, a hellish situation, man. <laughs> it's going to be likened it to hell, man. You know, <laughs> it's, 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 it's going to be. A, it's the worst thing that ever happened, okay, as far as judgment. You see? So, 
Lord will, you know, you brothers. All right, and you sisters edified. Till next time, I say shalom.